Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Jordan and Drew, the sports crew, Drew's College Athlete Spotlight, and we're back for episode four. We're going to be back in D3 again, and we got Abby Garceau on today from UW Oshkosh. We have a softball player today. We're going to be talking some D3 softball, so it'll be a lot of fun. And Abby, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. I mean, Abby, we were in a junior leadership together, so that's kind of the yeah. connection here. Let's get right into it for a great interview. Oh, we're going to be talking softball this episode. As yep. we already discussed. Um, so when did you start playing softball? So I actually played boys baseball until I was about eight. And then I transferred over to softball when I was eight and I've been playing ever since. Interesting. So you went from, was it baseball? Was it like peanuts then? Yep. Peanuts. Yep. And then that was for Michigan, we're going to guess? I was in Francis Crick at the time. Yep. So I That's lived true. there until I was a freshman. But so I was in the Crick the whole time for county league stuff. Okay. So with that, then, do you have a favorite youth softball moment so far? Oh, gonna, well, well when I was in youth softball, me and my team, whatever team I was on, we made it to the championship weekend eight years in a row. So that has to be the coolest thing was that, like, tradition to keep that going all those years. Of course. And we'll talk about your high school senior year because that Michigan yeah. team senior was something else. Um, we'll, <laughs> yeah. We'll get into it we'll, even with the Big East All-Conference team. It's basically oh, the whole good. Michigan team. Pretty cool stuff there. Yeah, um, yeah that was crazy. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to ask some some other questions here, like your favorite field. Do you have a favorite field? Honestly, if I have to pick one to be our home Mishkot field, I just love playing on it and love the memories it has. Obviously, there's quite a bit of them, so it'd have to be the Mishkot field. And then in your youth years, is there a favorite position you played? Like, was there somewhere you always wanted yeah, to be Yeah, I love shortstop. Favorite position, I think, of all time that I've played. I haven't really played anywhere else until I got to college, so. Gotcha. And then um, was there a moment that, like, just kind of, like, hit you? Like, hey, I can do this at the next level, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, actually, I was thinking about this before. It's It kind of hit me. So, after our loss against Horicon, a sophomore year in the state championship for softball, I got an email from our Oshkosh coach, Coach Scott Byer, and he just said, hey, get a heck of a championship run. Like, congratulations. If you're looking at colleges, make sure to keep you on, UW on your list. And I actually knew I wanted to stay close to home. So when that kind of hit, I was like, oh, like, Oshkosh is interested. This has been a, like, this is an hour away from home. And that's when it kind of hit me like, hey, I should start looking. I know I want to play at the next level. So Awesome. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about high school now. So talked a little bit about the youth that you played for, like you said, Francis Crick, and then yep. you guys softball in your youth, you guys made it, stayed all those years. And now just coming into high school, I mean, was it that kind of like that same group you were playing with in the youth? Um, it was kind of a mix. So like my two best friends growing up were Kylie Schmidt and Desiree Kleiman. They actually, I played softball with them growing up. So those are like two teammates that I was super close with and they actually didn't play in high school. So that was different is I had to kind of get used to new girls actually. Um, and it was a lot of Mishkot girls that I had played with. So not a lot of girls coming from the Crick, but it was different. And I was going into a good culture that Coach Chimic provided there too. So I knew going in that it was going to be a winning culture and I just got to provide what I, what I can. Awesome. And then, so high school year, yeah, you guys, like, you guys made it to state. Was it sophomore through junior year? Or was it, how, how many years um, did you guys? So sophomore and senior year, because junior year with COVID. Uh, yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah. So. No, you're good. You're good. Sophomore year, yeah, you guys were runners up, I believe, right? Yep. And then, yeah, your senior year, you guys were able to finally get over the hump and then yeah, win, win it. Yeah. So, just how was how was that? I mean, being it, a state it was champion, crazy. Yeah, I know. After coming off of basketball, like that one finally hit home, and then for softball, we weren't like expected to do it. We knew as a team we had a good shot, and that was our goal. But we didn't really try to think about let's go get a state title. We want to take it one game at a time, and. Once we started making a run deep in the playoffs, I'm like, oh, like we actually have a huge shot at this. And winning that meant a lot to me personally, just with how much adversity we overcame this year as a team. And that one really hit home. Yeah. And this, this Mishkot team, your, your senior year, 24 and three in softball. That's yeah. team batting average of 415 and a team ERA of 2.4. So, yeah, this was yeah. definitely. Yeah. A great Michigan team and twelve and zero in conference, undefeated. Yeah. Only only allowed five runs. Is that is that true? Yeah, I think it was. We held five runs off in conference, so that was that was pretty cool too. Wow, that's yeah. yeah I mean, that's that's something else. And just throughout these high school years, then um, from your freshman to senior year, were, were you involved in club softball as well? As, yeah, as well with the high school. 
Yep. So I played with two different organizations. I started playing with Lakeshore Rise actually when I was eight years old, right when I started softball. And I played up because they didn't really have a 10U or 8U team. I played up on the 12U team until I was 12 years old. And then I played with them until I got to the 16U level and we transferred over to Lake Effect Flurry, which is out of Manitowoc as well. Gotcha. And then I finished that this summer. So, so um, with that, I mean, you said you played up. Do you think, do you think credit playing up? Do you think that was a big part of like just building skills? I mean, playing against people older than yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, softball is a game of failure essentially, and you just got to find your way to succeed. So that's how I kind of learned just the basics. I knew then I was like, oh, lefty slapper. Like that's just when I built my foundation in softball, I'd say. So I think that helped me a lot growing up too, is just having to settle in with older girls and get used to the fast paced game that it's played at instead of growing up through the eight U's and the 10 U's. Yeah. And you mentioned the slap hitter um, kind of description. I, that's a lot. If we go through some scouting reports that they have of you, like on scout you, for example, we see right yep. away, we see the slap hitter. You want to talk about, yep. was there, is there some coach or is there someone like who, who, who like really helped you with that, with like the slap hitting? Yeah. So, to so say? my aunt Heather was actually my travel coach going up and she always made sure I had a mix of power hitting and slap hitting in there too, just to make sure it's a dual threat as well. I should say. And also I went to 360U out of Appleton is what it's called. It's run by uh, Laura Bayer and Marie Savi. And they actually ran clinics over that. So that helped me quite a bit too. Yeah. So credit those people. Like, I mean, I yeah. co coaches the shout out. Would, are those kind of the people you would be yeah. towards? Awesome. Yeah. And then especially my high school coach, Coach Shimmick and Coach Armbruster. I mean, they did a lot for me over the four years too. And just being there for me too. So. And then is there any teammate as well with that? We got yeah, shout I mean, out? there's so many I could shout out, but the two I would have to shout out was Taylor Krieger, who she really pushed me in high school ball um, just with drills, and she made sure I was the best player I could be. And then Maddie Doki, too. She's my third baseman. Um, sorry, someone just called me there. But she was my third baseman, so she pushed me a lot, too, and just being able to share the field with her was cool. Awesome. Awesome. So... We're going to transition a little now into more of the recruiting. I know we, we briefly touched on Oshkosh with them reaching yep. out and stuff, but we're going to talk about the Scout U thing. So how did you get involved, like, I mean, with the Scout U program yeah. as kind of a recruiter? So my mom actually heard about Scout U, um, I believe, my freshman year, and we just were kind of looking into it a little bit. But then when I got that email, I kind of knew, like, hey, like, I would like to play at the collegiate level, but what are my next steps I can take? So the next steps, I was like, okay, I don't really know how to reach out to coaches. So that's when I contacted Jason Lauren and we set up a meeting and they will email coaches or give me outlines on how to email coaches and help me um, narrow what schools I wanted to go to and really made an emphasis on making sure it fits your education first, making sure it fits your major first. So that's how I know how I got in reach with a bunch of colleges. And I don't think I would have gotten um, in reach with as many colleges as I did and helped me narrow down my, my decision of Oshkosh. Yeah, it seems like a great networking opportunity, of course. Yep. And just looking through some of the evaluations that are done, they do a really great job. I mean, some yeah. great points brought up here. Two strikeouts only as a freshman, Abby. That that's impressive. <laughs> right, right yeah, there. I was so. trying to beat it all all three years, but I couldn't. So And then yeah, like you said, they they put a priority on academics. They really do. They got very good yep. student. I mean, you had to make several AP scores and they even em emphasize you're looking to major in elementary education. So just yep. Letting colleges know, I mean, that, that's what we're here for. We're here for school first, but we also, right. we, right. we want to play some sports. So yeah. that, that's awesome. And yeah. um, then going with that as well, um, I you were able to make a personal message as well. They, they let you do that? Yeah, I thought that was the cool part too, is just to have a little bit of contact with the coaches. I know with the NCAA rules, it can be a little strict um, just with how that all works though. But they let you kind of personalize your own message to the coaches, say who you are, say where you're from. Um, kind of just who you are as a player and just be able to get the coaches feel for you without being able to contact you, which is a really cool aspect of what they do. Yeah. Scout you. So, I mean, I've never actually never seen any athlete yeah. for baseball or softball use this. Is it, do they mostly just do baseball and softball or do they? Do other um, I know they do all sports. I've just seen a lot of softball just because of my network with travel softball. And I just see a lot of girls do it, but I've also seen it for basketball as well. I know um, someone from Denmark actually, went the JUCO route with Scout U and they just committed to West Virginia. I can't remember his name, but I just know he went through Scout U, so they do all kinds of sports. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah, Scout U, if you're looking for some recruiting, I mean, yeah. 
A- Abby Garceau gives a 10 out of 10, it sounds like. Yeah, so. no, highly recommend. <laughs> so now, with okay, more with the college stuff. Um, so how many schools reached out to you? And like, I mean, we talked about it a little bit already, but like, was Oshkosh, yep. like, why Oshkosh? So I had actually plenty of colleges reach out because you send them your initial emails and they'll be like, hey, come to a camp. Hey, come to this camp. Here's an opportunity for you. Um, I actually ended up with five different D3 offers. And I always kind of had in the back of my head Oshkosh. Like everything just seemed right about Oshkosh. Um, I previously had a new coach buyer um, for since I was in like sixth grade with his network with 360U. And it had a great education program. And that's just how I kind of knew um, Oshkosh. Like I just always knew it felt like home, which was the most important thing for me. Awesome. And then with there, so now you commit to Oshkosh. Did you do this then? Was this in the spring or did you like do this already last year before your senior year? I actually committed October of last year. So little wow. beginning of my senior year. So I knew right away. So yeah, you see, it seemed like, cause there's some people that are kind of on the fence with previous people yep. we've, we've talked to, but this one seemed like you knew it was yeah. for you. So that, yeah, that's really my good. parents were hounded on me to keep my options open, but I just loved how close to home it was and the college feel of it too. So. It was a no-brainer for me. Let's get into some college softball now, Abby. So you get there, and we talked about a little before we before we started. You you have some fall ball going on right away. Yeah, you want to talk about that? Right. Yeah. So we got on campus. I got on campus the third of September, and the next day we were out having a captain's practice on the field. So we started right away. Um, We practiced three to four times a week, depending what the NCAA limit is. And we went, did a full practice, just getting prepared for our fall ball game. So we did about a month of that. And then on the 26th, we went up to Green Bay to play in two um, like non-conference exhibition games for our fall ball because we get one day as a D3 sport. So we played two games against them. Um, we split against them. And then we also had an alumni game, which counted as like our practice, which was just cool to bring the alumni back and they can share the experiences, especially with the freshmen and help us settle in a little bit. And it helped me too. A lot of them were some elementary education majors. So getting to talk to them about their experiences. So, but it was yeah. a little busy at first, but settled in now. So sounds like a good experience academically and athletically. And yeah. so, so far, what position have they, are you playing right now? Yeah. So, I mean, first practice, I kind of started off, he knew I was a middle infielder and now he likes me as a utility. <laughs> I would say um, I'm mixing in, in infield outfield. And that's one thing coming here is you never know what position you're going to play, which is a good thing. You can get playing time at any different position. So that's one thing I really like is I'm settling in in the outfield as well. But yeah, that, that, mix of it all, I guess. That's certainly going to be a plus for like playing time, of course, being able to play right. more positions, especially at right. the collegiate level. And yeah, with that, um, just how, how has it been like training wise? Has it been fun? I mean, has it been a lot yeah. more work than high school? How does it compare? Um. It depends because your schedule in college is a lot different than high school. So in high school, you're at school from 8 a.m. till 3 p.m. each day. You have practice right after here. I don't start class until 930. I have breaks in my days. So it's kind of getting used to time management. But um, we have lifts every day a week and we do captain practices once a week and study tables. So we have a mix of it all right now, which is really nice because you get a lot of time with the girls and getting to know each other, especially. So I'm having a good time with the girls. It's a lot of fun. It's awesome. And so about the lifting stuff, I mean, in high school, did, did they have your softball team lifting a lot? Like, was that something like, did you have a strength um, coach? Not really softball. So we actually had a strength coach and we go to him once a week, but it was more just arm recovery, that kind of stuff, just for stress of the arm and especially softball. Um, we did a little bit more lifting in basketball, but we never hounded on it as much as we do here just to build strength in the off season. And it's going to be huge because you're going two to three hours a day, you're traveling twice a week and it's going to be a lot more than it was in high school, but it'll be fun. So. Yeah. We talked about to Kyle Tuma last week about how yep. just different it was with the lifting and, and stuff. And that's, it's good to hear that in college. I mean, they're starting to incorporate more and more with even with sports yeah. like baseball and softball that you don't see right. a lot of lifting that happened in high school. So yep. let's get into the schedule for the 2022 UW Oshkosh softball season. So for the Titans it kicks off. February 26th at the College of St. Benedict in Minnesota. And yep. that is at 4.30. We got two games that day, again, and then one against Gustavus. Is it, was yep. it Gu- yeah, I think we're around Mankato that weekend, so we'll be kind of all over there. But Yeah, four games that weekend for the Titans, so that'll be interesting. Yep. Hopefully 
some of those games. Do they live stream some of those? Do you know? They should at that one. I know because it's in the Mankato Dome, so I'm sure they'll be live streaming those. Yeah, the home opener for the Titans then, March 5th, um, a Saturday. Lawrence University yeah. and Concordia University both play at UW Oshkosh, the Recplex, it's called, 9 and 11. Yep. So if you want to make it make an Oshkosh game, I mean, those are the games to yeah. go to a weekend. Right and early, but right in the dome next door to my dorm. So Awesome. And how, how is that dome? Like, you, do you enjoy it so yeah. far? I love it. It's actually worked out really well for us. So with our captain's practices and stuff, and now that we're going to start winter season soon, they didn't keep the dome up all year, but now they are. So we don't have to go to 6 a.m. Colf practices anymore. So I'm happy, but I never had to experience the early morning stuff yet. So awesome. Yeah. That comes in clutch indeed. And looking yeah. to round out the non-conference slate, we got two, a double header against who is it? Carroll University, a 3 p.m. Yep. and 5 p.m. Wednesday, March 30th. You got a 24-day layoff between games there. Is there a reason for that? Do you know? I think they're trying to build in a Florida trip in there. I know there's Ooh. something going on. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they can pull it out. But we should have a 10-game Florida trip in there. That'd be pretty cool. You'll be able yeah, to- I'm excited for that. Hopefully, everything works out okay. I know with COVID, it's been hard. But it sounds like it's a go for right now, so I'm excited. Kind of like a spring break with softball. It's yeah, cool. I know we'll go on spring break, so that's exciting. Awesome. So conference slate kicks off Saturday, April 2nd. UW Lacrosse, they got a doubleheader there, and it looks like you guys play doubleheaders against all your opponents. Yeah, and what's cool about lacrosse is my high school teammate, Maddie Doki, made the team there. So she'll be coming here. I'm sure we'll have plenty of Mishkat people here, but that'll be cool. That's yep, yeah, good for Michigan High School's softball yeah. program. And like we mentioned, like they had, I believe it was seven, seven or six who, t- or players who made the all conference yeah. first team last year. First yeah, softball, I think there were six or seven. Yeah, but that's something else. And yeah, so <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, UW Lacrosse, and then we got Ripon, UW Stout, UW River Falls, St. Norbert College, UW Whitewater, Lakeland University, UW Stevens Point, UW Eau Claire. And then to round it out, UW Platteville May first, so that yep. rounds out the the season there for right as of right now. Because like Abby hinted at, we might have a Florida trip built in here. So fingers that's crossed. Cool. Fingers crossed. We're hoping for the best for that. And yes, how is the team looking this year? Is there we got a lot of people returning? A lot of the older um, team. We or? actually lost nine seniors last year. Wow. So a big a big number, and they took fifth in the World Series last year. So coming off a really good season, but. We have a good group of girls here, too, and could make a possible run at it, hopefully. Fingers crossed. But it's a good group of girls. I love playing with them, so I'm really excited. Awesome. And is there anyone that you played with in high school? Like our, No, like, there is club? not. No, no, I haven't. I've only known one of the girls, and I played, like, travel basketball with her in, like, seventh grade. So that's the only girl I knew coming in here, which is kind of nice, too, kind of a fresh slate. Yeah, and certainly meeting all the, like meeting these new – you got a lot of new teammates to meet and stuff, and it's a big team. I'm just yeah. looking through the roster, even last year's. It's you guys, yeah, is it like 20 to 25? You fill up a roster? Yep, seems? we had well, we are at 17 this year, so kind of a shorter roster this year. It's also, I mean, it's a nice small group, too. Um, I don't know, I just like the girls. So I know last year, I think they were at 22 or 23. So okay, and then we got to fit more, a little bit more academics in here, of course, because that's what we're yep. here for. So it's still the elementary education, right? That's that's what we're yep. going for? And yeah, I'm doing a dual in elementary and special education. So with that, then you want to go work like elementary? I mean, obviously with elementary yep. school. Any but like, upper elementary, middle school area, I would like to work in a classroom there. So that'd be the go- end goal. Perfect. So any anything else you want to add, Abby? Uh, no, I think we covered the basics. So Awesome. Well. I wish you the best in your softball season. And we yeah. also wish you the best academically, of course, at UW Oshkosh. And yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Of course. You want to shout yourself out? Oh, I'm good. I don't know. Not the Instagram? Go follow Abby.Garso. There you go. Uh, you guys Perfect. heard her. Go follow her on Instagram. Yep. And myself, Drew Skyberg, D R E W S K Y B E R G. Be on the lookout for episode five of the College Athlete Spotlight Series as Patrick Baldwin Jr. might be coming on. I mean, we already got the verbal commitment. Yeah, we just got to. that. Very cool. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, it was a lot yeah. of work, but it, it's some exciting stuff, and I'm really looking yeah. forward to it. So 
with that yeah. being said, yeah. Thank you all for listening to yet another episode of Jordan and Drew, the sports crew, the perfect podcast.